10 signs you are in a relationship with a covert narcissist. And if you're new here, I'm a narcissistic abuse educator and a narcissistic relationship recovery coach. Make sure you hit follow and also jump across to YouTube and follow me there. So number one, they are always the victim. They have a sob story for every occasion. Number two, they feel incredibly hard done by, by the world. This person feels like they know better and they can do better than just about anyone else in just about any field. Their brilliance has just never been recognized. And that is a chip that they carry with a long suffering bitterness and resentment. Number three, they lack empathy. You cry, they don't care. Like dead behind the eyes level of don't care. They may look after you when you're sick or they may not. But if they do, they do it with such resentment and they guilt the hell out of you for it. Like, oh my God, there's your water. And then they hold things like that over your head. Like, I care about you so much. When you were sick, I brought you water. Which leads me to number four. They think they deserve a medal for every good deed that they do. No good deed goes uncollected upon down the line. Number five, they are two completely different people depending on whether you guys are out in public or in private at home alone. Meaning that when you guys are out, they are attentive, they are loving, they are kind, they're helping strangers across the street, they're giving to the homeless, they're helpful with their friends. They're such a good guy or girl. And at home, they either act like this empty shell of a person that's barely present in the household and ignores you, or they're actively critical and abusive. Number six, in the beginning of the relationship, they love bombed and sex bombed you. It wasn't necessarily, although it may have been extremely overt, but they were very interested in you and they rushed the relationship and took up as much of your time as they possibly could. And then once they had you, they pretty swiftly withdrew all of their love, affection, attention, approval, and sex. And now it's like, as my friend Elaney from No Noxin says, you have cooties and they barely even touch you and potentially shame you for wanting sex and potentially enjoy not giving it to you and almost seem to get a kick out of how that makes you feel and how that devalues you. Which leads to number seven. They are devaluing you, but it's subtle. It's passive aggression. It's catty little comments. It's backhanded compliments. Things that if you called them out, they could tell you you were being sensitive or crazy or too much. And you might believe them because it is just subtle enough, just covert enough that it makes it hard to call out. But you just feel like nothing you do is ever good enough. They are never happy with you or anything that you do. And this includes potentially subtly triangulating you with other men or women, friends or family, co-workers, etc. Number eight, they are incredibly hypersensitive to criticism, perceived or otherwise. They are paranoid. They constantly feel like you are attacking them, trying to hurt them, trying to persecute them, trying to humiliate them or disrespect them. They misread your facial expressions, they misread your tone, and they take words that you used way out of context and you feel like this person low-key sees you as a bit of an enemy instead of a partner. And they seem to have no capacity for insight into their own behavior or the wild double standards that they hold. Number nine. They suffer from a lot of anxiety and depression, particularly a lot of social anxiety. They hate large public gatherings. They hate parties. They hate getting out of their comfort zone. They hate getting away. If you go away with them, they turn into a monster. They need routine, familiarity, and to be in control of their environment. And they tend towards being an anxious, miserable mess when no one's watching and they take it out on you. And number 10, covert arrogance, entitlement, grandiosity, and fragile ego. They low-key think that they are all that, 
but it's low key. So much so that it's confusing because there's clearly a lot of self-hatred and insecurity, but the arrogance is there. Let me know in the comment section how many of these you ticked off.